Hi there, it's Denise. How to stay fit over 50 with Denise. How to stay fit after 50 with Denise on Facebook and Instagram. DeniseAnger.com, how to stay fit over 50.com, right here on YouTube. And you can always get me, DeniseAnger at gmail.com, and leave comments and messages below. I do read them. I might not get to them immediately because I do teach. Quite a few fitness classes every week. I also have private clients and I'm also a marketer. So um, sometimes my days kind of fly by and I don't get online as often as I'd like. But leave the message or comments and I will reply. Okay, let's get to it. Today we're talking about tips to recover after your hysterectomy. Now, when I had my hysterectomy, I was in the hospital three days, two nights. The first day, of course, you have the hysterectomy. Then they move you up into, after you're out of recovery, they move you up into your hospital room and they give you that morphine or whatever that's in that pump. I'm thinking it's morphine, but every time I'd hit that thing, I was out, hit. So the first night I basically slept. I even told my husband, you don't need to stay here. I said, just go home, um, I'm fine. I think at that point my, was my youngest daughter still at home? She might've still been at home. But it's the second day we need to talk about. That first day is gonna be a blur for you, so don't even stress about that first day. But the second day, my friend came up to visit me, and she's like, why are you still in bed? And she's a fitness instructor, as I am. And we know one of the best ways to heal is to get up and get moving. So she's like, Denise, why are you still in bed? I said, well, the nurses said I can't get up because the doctor didn't say I could get up. So she got the nurses and she's like, well, you need to get in touch with the doctor because she should be out of bed walking. I was already up because she had a hysterectomy. She said she was already up and walking. So it was kind of weird that I wasn't um, up and walking at that point. So got a hold of the doctor and the doctor said, oh, absolutely, she should have already been up. So that's the first tip for you. Make sure that your doctor has informed the nurses that you are to get up and get moving. I'm gonna tell you what, you'll feel so much better when you get up and get moving, just simply walking around. I was doing laps around the hospital floor and I felt like like 100 times better than I did laying in that bed. So in the hospital, day two, get that release so you can get up and get walking. Now you're gonna come home. The, the third day I went home, I don't know what day it'll be for you, but Next, you're gonna be coming home. Now remember, you will be on pain pills, so you will not realize, um, you're gonna feel pretty good, and you're gonna to wanna to do a lot of stuff, and I think it was on the second or third day I was out there spreading horse manure in the um, back where the horses are, because I felt fine, I'm on Percocet, right? And that evening, I didn't feel so fine. So remember, you're healing on the inside. What you see on the outside is completely different than what you're going to be feeling on the inside. So you need to take it easy. Next, stay ahead of the pain. So if you're on pain meds every four hours, every four hours, take that pain medication because you might think that you don't need it. You're gonna need it. All of a sudden, that pain meds are gonna wear off. You had pieces of your body removed. You are going to need that pain medication. After the first week, I don't even know if it was a full week or it was five days, whatever, they transitioned me over to Motrin. So, but when they give you the prescription for the pain meds, stay on the pain meds until it runs out. You're supposed to do that. Um, you need to rest. Rest, rest, and rest some more. You know, just let your body have the time it needs to recover. All right, like I said, people don't talk about these things and that's why I'm doing these video series. We need to sit and talk to each other so that we know what to expect. You do need to rest. Hello, you just had your uterus shanked out of you, that uterus that you've had in you your whole life. Started with your very first gift, my present arrived this month, I don't know where they came up with that one. Next thing, childbirth, then we're going through perimenopause, into menopause, history, you know, whatever it is, your body is going through a transition. You need to give it the time to rest. Now, some women have problems with constipation. I am not that woman. I have never had that problem in my life. However, if that is you, you need to make sure that you're drinking the water your body needs, which is half your weight in ounces. If you weigh 150 pounds, Daily, your body needs 75 ounces of water. 
That's the first thing. The water helps keep things moving and flushing it out. The other thing is I would go with fruits and vegetables first. Okay, stay away from that high fiber stuff. You don't want it, you don't need any additional bloating at this point. Fruits and vegetables, try to get things moving that way. If that doesn't work, you may need a um, stool softener or a very mild laxative. So have those on hand just in case, all right? It's a good thing just to be prepared. Being prepared is not a big deal. Now, I had an incision from hip to hip. I've talked about that before, and it's still, to this day, it'll itch. Sometimes it itches, and shoot, it's been six years now. You need to take care of that incision. Keep it clean at all times, all right? I also, um, I also kept, I'm trying to think what this stuff was. I, use, I didn't really use peroxide, but they, there's a, a soap that they have you use before you even have the surgery. You'll know what I'm talking about. But they're gonna tell you to get this soap to wash your body with before the surgery. That's what I used for my incision afterwards. And you know, let it air out as much as you can to help with the healing of it. Um, wear loose clothes. You need to wear nice, loose, comfy clothes. You don't want anything binding around your surgery or, I mean, even if you went laparoscop laparoscopically, you still have incisions. So make sure you have loose, comfy clothes around that you wear those. And um, most important tip that I can give you, if something doesn't feel right, trust yourself and call the doctor, okay? You know your body better than anybody else knows your body, including the doctor. If there's something that doesn't feel right, pick up the phone and call your doctor and talk to them. Alrighty, I hope that helps. Um, I think that was six, seven tips, something like that. It's, it's gonna be okay, you're gonna get through it, I promise you, but just being a little bit prepared so that when you do come home from the hospital, you're ready, you know, you have everything you need, it'll make your recovery that much uh, simpler and smoother. I hope you're having an amazing day. Don't forget to hit subscribe, watch for the next video. I'm updating uh, pretty much weekly. So watch for the next video. I'm gonna continue with the, um, after the hysterectomy series. We already did questions before, now this is after. And we're gonna get into weight and all that good stuff again. Like I said, now, now at this point, I'm six, seven years out. It's a whole different ball game than it was the first one, two, three years. So you're gonna see um, that I'm also almost 60 now at this point. So your body does change. Be kind to yourself because you're pretty damn amazing the way you are right now. So don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Hope your day is amazing. Bye, y'all.